I definitely do like them. As a company, as products, I have not seen too many Timney triggers that I didn't think I would do well with. I like them as a company. I love what they represent and their boldness for Christ. I'm super proud of them for those reasons. And I like the Timney that's in my Savage 110. It was a great replacement for that Savage. If you don't like the sliver triggers or the bladed triggers, then you know consider the Timney for your Savage 110s. I haven't talked about that. I should do a, a dedicated review of that trigger and maybe talk about how I messed up when I was installing it a little bit. But anyways, this trigger, um, I don't know. I don't know that I'm sold on this trigger just yet. It has taken some getting used to. I love the look. I love the feel of the trigger. I like some of the features of the trigger. But my performance downrange is what I have to evaluate and think about, and also my limitations. Now, I don't have a connection to Timney, other than the fact that I just really like them as a company, and it seems like a decent company with really good products. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this trigger and why I've struggled with it. First of all, I have done some amazing bump fire with this, and you could say, well, that's just inexperience, or maybe you're a crappy AR shooter, and sure, I'll take the charge. I, I shoot a lot more bolt guns nowadays than I do ARs, but it's happened a few times to a few different people that I respect where we have just noticed that this sponginess right before that take up allows you to put just enough pressure in and just prep your position enough, your shoulder, all that, that when it does accidentally break early, it causes a person to just bump fire. I have cooked off six rounds at 600 yards in impressively at about a silhouette size. I uh, held it pretty tight, which I was impressed with. But I have cooked off six rounds in a bump fire by just accidentally not prepping that. So I find that I need to take at least one or two warm-up shots every time I take this gun out just so that I'm comfortable if I'm in the prone. It has happened on the bench before too to uh, an experienced shooter that I respect. And I've just noticed that it's, it's kind of the pre-travel of the trigger. Now I have the barrel on here and I like the barrel design. It has other shoes that you could put on there, perhaps that would limit uh, how much potential there would be for a bump fire, but it would not take away some of that pre-travel that I'm feeling in the trigger mechanism. Now I installed it correctly. It is positioned well, it's tensioned well. That's not the issue here. I'm just feeling a little bit of pre-travel. And so let me charge this again. Okay, just ghosting it for a second. So I get my finger on there. The barrel feels great. The grip feels great on there. I'm very comfortable with that. I start to press and I, I usually press towards the bottom of the trigger, not up here, down here. And as I'm pressing, you know, it is, it's, there's just a little, a little pre-travel and I would say a little bit of, it's a little squishy as it's getting to that wall and the wall tends to be just a bit of a surprise when it actually finally curls over and breaks. So is it a lack of practice? Sure it is. I, I think if I practice with a lot more, it'll become more predictable to me. It feels a little bit less natural than some other triggers that I've run and even other Timney triggers could be the fact that it's extremely light. Maybe that's part of the problem here is it's just a very light trigger. This is a gas operated uh, gun and it's, it's not a very nice gun. It's a very average AR. Sure, some of that could be part of it. But in my experience, I'm not shooting it super tight. I, I compared it against another trigger, um, took the same upper, put it on a different lower, and I indeed did shoot the other lower a little tighter than I do with this one. And the only thing I can guess, because it has the same stock and stuff, the only thing I can guess is that that trigger is something that I'm having trouble with. And a couple of my friends have had trouble with it too. And so, I don't know. I don't know if I can get behind this one. I don't know if I can recommend it if you're not gonna dedicate to it and learn it and then shoot it really well. I will say shooting standing up, um, positional shooting, it's awesome. It's really, really, really fast. So if I'm just stand up shooting, if I'm running around doing the two gun or three gun kind of thing, it's amazing, it is stellar. And uh, I find in that position, it's very, very good. But in prone positional shooting, I am just struggling a little bit with it. And I think it's the, the skush, that little bit of skush. before it actually breaks. Just kind of moving on me a little bit and then suddenly 
then it kind of breaks. It's a little bit too rolly for me. I wish it was more of a, a glass break in there. So maybe I'm just really picky, but I like Timney as a company. I highly suggest them. Their products are excellent. Um, this is the first time that I found something that just wasn't my cup of tea per se, and I'm free to change my mind. I might come back later with a little more practice. I have practiced a lot, but maybe a lot more practice, and maybe I'll say, you know what, I finally figured it out. Here's the situation. I'll keep you guys posted, but if you have this trigger, let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm going to go shoot some groups here. Uh, the first group I shot, cold bore for the day, first five shots were in one MOA at 600 yards, so it's not like... It's so debilitating that I can't at least keep MOA size groups. And I'm shooting 77 grain OTMs from AAC. I'll go ahead and throw a few more down here. Maybe you'll be able to hear them. I, I almost kind of doubt it today. It's too quiet. And I'm shooting a thick steel, but perhaps you will. All right, that's 600 yards, two-third size IDPA. About seven mile an hour winds going from right to left. Impact. 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 Glance off the shoulder. We'll call that an impact. One thing that tends to go well is the reset. So after I press the trigger, the reset itself is very tactile, I can feel it really well. And pressing the trigger after that, what if I'm not going from a cold start, just going from the reset, it's nice. I feel much more comfortable after I get that first shot off, but typically because of the weird sponginess in the first shot, before I get to a reset, it bothers me a little bit. But from the reset, it's better for sure. It's more comfortable, more predictable, a little bit more glassy feeling, I would say for sure.